Hey, what week is it this week, Jared? Masters week. I made it. <laughs> is it Masters week, Jan? It's Masters week. Yay. Gosh, everybody's like so excited to watch TV. It's, it's the only golf course that's the most public golf course in the world that everybody knows every hole that you can't get on to play. <laughs> and, uh, and then Scotty Scheffler will win by 13 strokes this week. And no, come on. <laughs> put us to sleep. Uh, it happens. So hopefully it won't happen this week. But in case it doesn't, because we could just come out here and say, hey, put it all on Scotty Scheffler. Good night, everybody. Uh, but anybody could do that. So we're going to try to find you some other possibilities other than Scheffler or even Rory. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be uh, the Rory fan base that are always going to keep their fingers crossed that he's going to get the fourth major, complete the Grand Slam. Uh, do you think it's mostly nerves, Jan, that Rory can't complete it? Yeah, I think it's, it's the pressure that he puts on himself because he wants it so badly. You know, it, it, it was like Nancy Lopez. I mean, she never did win a U.S. Open, and she wanted it so badly. She, she, when it got down to it, she just couldn't play. It is an incredible amount of pressure. I mean, it's you can see why there's only 10 or 20 that can actually win it because the thing about it is coming down the stretch, you got to figure the last the last five holes, if you've got the lead, it's nerve-wracking, like really, really nerve-wracking. And it's not like when you make a mistake at any other course that you play, probably except maybe a couple of the majors, it's one of those courses if you – Everywhere else you can make a mistake and you make a bogey. Every mistake you make on on Augusta National coming down the stretch is a double bogey at least. It's one of those golf courses. And so when you make a mistake, it is so, so exaggerated. And then you think of the holes. There's so many hard holes. And now look what they've done with 15. And they've made it so hard that you can't, you, you really can't even go for it now in two, but then it's such a hard third shot. I mean, it's such, yeah. they, they have really made the golf course tough. Well, I mean, that's okay as far as we're concerned because we've seen enough easy golf courses out there. Um, even though, strangely enough, these Texas golf courses sure, uh, well, I mean, the two guys that, if it wasn't for uh, Patia and uh, McCarthy, it would have seemed like it was a tough golf course. Those guys just went nuts uh, with their scoring uh, on Sunday, of course, wrapping it all up. But still, uh, it's nice to have the tough golf courses, and it should be. Um, all right, so I tell you what, let's uh, take a look. Might as well go right to the trends. And um, it just shows you that the cream rises to the top at the Masters with the last 11 first-time winners ranking inside the top 30 at the time of their win. And it's also important to note that you mostly you need experience at Augusta because the last 11 first time winners had an average of 6.9 appearances and Rom won last year on his seventh appearance. So that seems to have at least held true. And the last 11 winners, by the way, I said that they all ranked inside the top 30 while well, their average world ranking was 11.6. And the funny thing is, uh, Jared, that if you look at it, the uh, out of the I think it's six of the first. What is it? Here it is. It's seven of the top eleven world ranked players do not have a win this season. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think in some ways the Masters is one of the easier events to handicap because we know you need to have experience and just good course history here, and for the most part, you need to be playing well coming into the event. And to me, I think I think Jan, you alluded to this, but to me, there's there's only like ten, maybe fifteen guys that I feel like really have a chance to win this week. And honestly, a handful of those guys are, are live players because a lot of these higher end PGA Tour guys just aren't playing well enough coming into this week. I'd be I'd be surprised if someone like Colin Morikawa won or Victor Hovland won just because they just they haven't been playing well all year. Yep. And 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 you also, it's interesting too, is is that uh, not only. Uh, when Larry Mize won back in 87, was it his maiden pro win? Now that's back in 87. The last player to make the Masters, the maiden win for that person. But it's also the last time that a player had at least, uh, had won without at least three prior pro wins. Now that means, you know, KFT, uh, Challenger, Euro, whatever. So it just shows you that 
not only is it about uh, experience and all that, but man, you, you need to have some win somewhere to have to show. And there are some players that don't have that. I mean, there are some players that don't fit that criteria. Matter of fact, I think uh, Cameron Young's one of those players. Sahith mm-hmm. Gal is one of those players. So there are a few players, of good players, that you would think would compete that just don't fit that bill. But then again, it's a different time. I think the talent of the players uh, nowadays, Jan, are a lot more fu- refined and, and more talented than the ones back when Larry Mize was playing. Well, yeah, they're they're closer. There's a closer difference in the players. They're you know they they all have played college golf and they've played elite golf courses and they've been under the pressure of playing with the PGA. So it's not like it's a brand new thing. There is the, the funny thing is there's always like that some one player like a Larry Mize, like a lot of guys that have played made it into the playoffs that really shouldn't shouldn't have won the tournament. But what happens is. If you look at those ones, like the Trevor Immelmans, I'm not taking anything away from them, is the two things. One, the course was set up a lot shorter back when Larry won. Um, you know, they were, they were saying, I was listening to a, um, them talk about it in, on the press thing, and they were saying that you could, on number nine, you could play, the, I mean, number one was a driver seven nine max that was normally a driver seven nine, well, or, or to, and even a nine nine for the long hitters. No, there's not one par four out there that's that way anymore. It's maybe 14. It's just a really long golf course. And so you eliminate any of the short hitters right there and then. Now, the other thing is they had the green so fast. Um, there's a couple of times when uh, Zach Johnson won, when the greens were so – I played on the Monday afterwards and I, I putted it off the green on nine <laughs> from the top – from the above the hole. It was that fast. Well, wasn't and that so, the year that they, they had the cold spell when yeah. he won? It was like yeah. the temperatures and, and were the so low. Were, yeah, and that's you know, that's when Gary McCord got fired because he said they looked like they bikini waxed the greens, and uh, he got fired for that. <laughs> He's never been allowed to come back because he said that. But they were so fast, and and so there were there was a little bit of trick you know trickery in it. So you had to really make sure that you're always being defensive, which is not. You know augusta national there is no rough there that's the, you know it's a wide open golf course when you get there you're like oh my god it's, the two things you find out is that it's very hilly and it's wide open there is no rough the only thing is that they just have the pine straw under the trees so but it's still you know in a ridiculously impossible golf course and they've made it over the years so long that again that's eliminating some more players because it's that's so long. I mean, I know when Lee Trevino used to say he wouldn't play the Masters because he couldn't get it up on top of the hills. And now they're blowing it over those hills. But, I mean, look at number two now. You know, they, they moved that tee back 15 yards. And now it's – and they moved – it's not so much the distance because it's a par five and it is the easiest hole and will probably still remain the easiest hole on the golf course. But the difference is they've made it where it's more of a dog leg. So if you hit it – too far to the left, it's going to kick off that hill and go down into the, the, there's actually a little bit of water down there. So, you know, in the trees. And so it's, they've even made that hole where it's, it's really all about driving it long and driving it straight. All right. Let's uh, take a look at some uh, key stats that Jared put together for this week. And I'm going to pop them up on the screen. First of all, you got the top 10 in course history. Uh, you've got the top 10 in, uh, strokes gained per round uh, 24. You also, uh, let's get rid of those and pop in the, because we have uh, four this week, including top 10 in strokes gained T to green and top 10 in par fours, 450 to 500 uh, over the last 12 months. So Jared, talk about those four uh, stats, uh, why you uh, you know zeroed in on them this week. Yeah, again, the, the first three are first, you know, who, who's played the best here. And I looked at strokes gained per round at Augusta last five years. I omitted the 2020 November Masters, though, because I, I think everything I read, you know, I, the course just played different that year. The scoring was, you know, way lower than usual. So I, I omitted that year. So, you know, we're looking at. That was also um, the one with no, no fans, right? Yes, correct. Okay. And it was wet. Uh, yep. So, so, so we're looking at four years of history there. You see the top 10 in, in strokes gained uh, per round at Augusta. And the next two are just who's playing best this year. Strokes gained total per round this year. Strokes gained tee to green per round this year. And then the last one, these long par fours, exactly what Jan was talking about. Um, eight holes 
at Augusta are between 440 and 495 yards. One of the par fours is even longer than that. So there's only one short par four on this golf course. So I think the two things st- statistically that are important at Augusta are par five scoring. You have to score on the par fives and then who's best at these long par four. So that's what this list is here. These top 10 players in par fours between 450 and 500 yards over the last 12 months. A lot of the best players in the world, obviously, a lot of the longest hitters in the world, obviously, which is, again, as Jan was saying, driving distance is important here. Those are the type of players you want to be looking at. All right. So uh, we are going to pop up also this. These are the uh, matter of fact, uh, let me make sure you guys can also see it as everybody else uh, sees the odds. There they are. So let's take a look at the odds for this week. And Scheffler, of course, look, we've been talking about this for a couple of months with the futures. Nothing really changed, even from last week. But here they are um, as we move along. These are the top favorites. And you're not really going – I mean, the the thing you do notice, though, are some of the bargains. Um, And and knowing that you're able to get Hovland and Fitzpatrick at 35-1 – to can't lay DJ Zalatoris, Wyndham Clark at 40 to 1, JT, wow. uh, Cam Smith if he's healthy, uh, 45 to 1. Morikawa is 50 to 1. So <laughs> home is 55 to 1. Now, look, there are reasons for these odds, but it's still really good odds. Um, I think it, it, it just along the lines of what you're, you, you alluded to before, Jared, and that is the fact that it's a, it's a much easier course to handicap because even though as jan has said there are so many changes it's still for the most part it's augusta it is what it is if you play well there or if you don't you would think that that's just your history um and that's nothing nothing's going to change that generally unless you're sergio garcia uh which as we know jan uh and, and many people may may realize this uh, even Sergio felt he there was no way he would ever win a Masters. It was just not his thing. He, he had terrible, even though he had top tens, he was never in contention for a win. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he went ahead and won a Masters. So it does happen, but you know, percentage wise, if you're not good there, you're just not going to win there. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's the, the only thing that you could say about about that is that he um, he's always been a really good iron player. And I was there that year when he won, and and he really kept his ball in the right place, and that's that's important. I mean, it's almost like you've got to be really good with your irons too, because even though the greens are treacherous and they also talk about how you got to have a great short game, if you're in the right place, the pots aren't that bad. And and he he had his iron play it was really really good that year. All right, so let's uh, and and we're going to go over not only the favorites, but we're going to go over uh, just about every conceivable player that we think that you should be keeping an eye on. Because again, we don't think there's a lot of them, um, but we'll we'll go over as many as we can here. Uh, As we, before, I tell you what, before we do this, Jan, uh, because we're talking about the, just mentioning players that play well here and players that don't. So out of like the top, whatever, top 10, 15, 20 ranked players in the world, Give me a few players that you just think, yeah, you know what? I know they're great. I know they're ranked in the top 10. They're in the top 15, but I just don't give them a really good chance of playing here because this just not doesn't suit their game. For some reason, I feel that way about Scheffler. And I, I mean, not Scheffler, Sheff- Shoffley. Shoffley? Really oh, Shoffley. That's J- Jared's top pick this week. <laughs> I just don't know that. And you know what? I watched him play, and he just was, a, he was immaculate when I watched him play. And I was like, I don't know why it is that I just don't think that he's got that spark. When you look about how look how well he did it, you know, at the Olympics and everywhere. But I don't know. I just there's something about him. I tell you, the other one I don't think is that good is Hovland. I think Hovland's game. Maybe he hasn't played it enough yet. You know how you were talking about Greg about the numbers. Yeah. It just takes a while to understand the golf course. You know, I just, you know, that I, the perfect example. I say it every time. The year that what, four years, in 17, whenever it was that, that Tiger won. And all three of them, Finau and Kepka, and I can't remember the la- the other one, all dumped it in the water on 12, and I was sitting right there on 12T when they did it. And I was like, what are they thinking? You never go for that pin on Sunday. And Tiger stood up right up there. He watched them too. He was playing in the group behind. 
and uh, and he was playing with I think he was playing with Kepka, but he watched the other two dunk it in the water going for that pin on the right and he, and it was like who everybody knows on the on Sunday you've got to go back left because when you stand on that tee the way the green sits it looks like the pin that you've got plenty of room and it's over to the right but you don't it is literally you've just got to go on when that pin is there on the right it's a traditional pin from day 1 and it and so many balls will suck back into the water i played the year the day, the year after, the the day after, um, Freddie won, and I, we all put balls at the top of that green, and how his ball stopped on that spot I, is beyond us. How yeah, that happened? You but need he that. Did, and he won the event, but yeah. he's the only one I've ever seen where it didn't go back into the water, and it's it's an obvious mistake, but it's one that you have to know. Like, and and you could see Tiger was just like. Wow! Thank you. <laughs> it was yeah. like it was amazing to watch. Uh, Jared, I, and we take a look at other other players, good players that, matter of fact, that, that don't have good histories here overall, uh, mm -hmm. results wise. Cantley, you know, he started at thirty to one, as we just said. Now he's about what fifty to one or so. Uh, yep. uh, the Shambo, I mean, you would think this would be a perfect venue for the Shambo. He has one top 25 in seven appearances and has a combined 23 over par here. Wow. Uh, that's the show. You got the shampoo. You got can't lay. So are, are there se several players like that, that, that you're just like, no way. I, I don't, I don't care how, how even Homa, one of your favorites yep. is a combined 25 over par here. Uh, uh, players like that. You just, no, I don't care what their odds are. I'm just not taking them. Yeah. I'm just looking down the list of, again, you know, strokes gain total per round in Augusta over those last four years. And we fit on a lot of guys who play poorly here, at least, you know, compared to how, how good they are elsewhere. Um, Bur Burns is another one, you know, he's 37th in, in strokes gain total over the last four years. He hasn't had much success here. The Bryson's interesting because Bryson definitely checks the box of, of being long off the tee. I think he struggles with like the creativity you need at Augusta, right? Like he, he doesn't, that's really not part of his game. He's, he's yeah, you know, more of true. like a, a robot out there so I, I think that that's where he struggled at augusta maybe he'll figure it out eventually as he gets more experience but um i don't he, he has been playing well on live but i don't i don't think he he's ready to win uh other Masters, so other least, least players who haven't played well here terrell hatton is 45 over par out of seven appearances uh so maybe you could scratch him out um <clears throat> and and that's really only the top players uh i have to ask you about harm and jan because Harm is interesting. I think he's about 65 to 1 or something like that. So first of all, he's a lefty. That immediately go, ooh, lefty, Augusta. And then you take a look. He's won his major. But he's only made two of six, uh, two of five cuts here. And he's 18 over par combined. He does have a 12th place finish in 2021. And again, he's fresh off his major win. He's the last major champ. Um, which is probably another big reason why expecting him to win this week. It's Back to back majors, it's just not going to happen. But um, do you think Brian Harmon is one of those players that, even though he's not a powerful hitter, uh, he does have some things that, I don't know, maybe just one year he might be able to put it together? Or do you think he's just a guy that, no, I don't think he's ever going to win at Augusta? No, no, no. I think I think he has the ability to be able to win there. I, I, I just think, um, and it, it is a, it is a, tall task i shouldn't say that because he is short but it is a tall task to be able to win the golf course the tournament the championship without being a long hitter because that means you're going to have a lot of fairway woods coming into those elevated greens but saying that I, I he has the ability to be able to get it because there are other players that have won there you know like, that we've that we've talked about yeah. but it depends on the way the course is set up you know i've heard the courses they've got the course firm they're expecting rain Friday. So if you go by your stats that you've been talking about, Greg, that, that the people that um, you, you get, if you get off to a good start, it, it's a big advantage in this event. And it usually is in any major, but especially in this one, because it's one of those ones where you can't make up room on the back nine. I mean, look how many over the years have absolutely collapsed coming down the stretch. But you know, why do you think that is? Because I would have, if I didn't look at all these stats, I would, I would think that of all the majors, this is the major where you can come from behind. 
you've got those par fives. You can you can go eagle eagle. Uh, you know, you could just turn things around on that back nine in, 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 in that final day. But it doesn't happen. You don't come from behind at Augusta. No, no, and it's that's because of the pressure. That okay. is definitely you. You spend the, the back nine with your heart in your throat. You, you hear, every, you know, you hear everything. Enormous galleries. You make one mistake, like I've said, it's 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 you know it's disaster, and it's huge pressure. I mean, the, I've seen more people collapse at that event over the years than anywhere at any other championship or any other tournament. It's it's you you're so nervous you want it so badly and again the golf course punishes you you like i said earlier at the opening of the show you make a mistake coming down the stretch you know you think of the holes there's no there's no let up what's you that uh up. what was that yeah. part three yeah. that jordan uh collapsed on but what yeah part? he he collapsed on 12. 12 okay he dumped three in the water on 12. and that's after he had won a, a green jacket yeah. So. Yeah, and he and he had a you know all he, he had like about a five shot lead with eight holes to go, Amazing. or nine holes to go, eight holes to go. Yeah. Um, so it, it's just it's I've seen it happen more. I mean, look at famous Greg and oh yeah, and um, in Rory's done it, and it's and it's devastating. So it it it's really intimidating that golf course. Okay, uh, let's go right. Uh, but and and by the way, with with, with Harmon being a lefty, does being a lefty in in some way is that an advantage at Augusta? No, not really, because the the golf course is pretty even. If you think of the holes, that there's left to rights and right to lefts on every hole. I think the the advantage is going to be to hit it high. Uh, that's that to me is a bigger advantage than turning the ball one way or the other. Okay. All right, uh, let's go. Look, Scheffler. What else is there to say? Uh, he, and he's only got one green jacket, but he's—you just get the feeling he's probably going to have about three or four when it's all said and done. Um, he's trying to be the first player. Uh, Tiger is the only other player to win both the Players and the Masters in the same year. Uh, that was back in two thousand and one. Uh, but uh, Scheffler's already broken a trend this year, winning back to back. Uh, TPCs. So if anybody can do it this year, I'm sure uh, Scotty could do it. Um, I got, I got to say this and look, we don't like taking four to one shots, but this would be the one time all year that I would say, if you want to go out and you just want to put whatever you want to put, you want to put a thousand down, 500 down, hundred bucks and just go, I'm going all out on Scheffler. That's all I'm going to do. I, I would say, go ahead and do it. I agree. I th I think that's his his game suits Augusta National because he hits the ball really high. He's a great chipper. His putting is better, and he's a good iron player. So he's he's and he's playing well. I think this might be his. I I, I and I've been saying this for a few weeks is that his his wife's still with him, you know, traveling with him. So, but she's she's two weeks away, and she looks like she's ready to go. So I'm thinking okay. that. He's going to have a little baby crying the next time he's going to play a tournament. So, this is a this is a big one for him. Jared, I think if nothing else, like Scheffler is going to be in the mix on Sunday. So, if you want to make a bet and just have a, a Sunday sweat, <laughs> I think Scheffler's a pretty safe bet. You know, it's not not for me at plus four fifty, but I do think if you're just looking to have a little fun on, on Master Sunday, Scheffler is a good way to go. Yeah, I mean, if you if you want to be sure that you're going to be there on Sunday, there's no yeah. player that you'd rather have the wager on yep. than Scheffler. Okay, so then you've got McElroy and Rahm are next, and Rahm's already got his green jacket, and he's been okay on the live tour. Everything's been in the top ten, but on the live tour, you would expect more from John Rahm. Mm -hmm. But look, defending back at Augusta or any major is just a very tall task, and he's, he's made all seven of his cuts. Um, I just I just don't see that happening. I think that would be a big ask. Uh, so out of those two, I would actually take Rory. I know he has he's not on top of his game, even though last week he seems to feel he's a little bit better than you know he's been before. He does have seven top tens at Augusta. He was runner up just a couple of years ago. And interesting is that he's he's played the week before the Masters five times, and over the last four or six times over the last four he has improved each time 
So, matter of fact, the last time he played the week before the Masters, he was runner-up. So he, to, to improve on that trend, he'd have to win this week. So, and he's trying to do anything different to, to, to change up uh, his strategy of winning at Augusta because whatever, has, uh, whatever he's worked on before just has not worked. But let's also keep in mind he's missed two of his last three cuts at Augusta Jan. That's pretty incredible. But everybody puts too much pressure on him. And, but I, I actually think he's playing a little better. You know, he's, he's trying to just say, oh, I'm getting my driver more in play because he'll hit one just off the world. If he does it on the right holes, you, you know, you might get it. You might be, be lucky. I, I think he's due. You know, I mean, he's he played better last week. And, you know, if you look at the trends, it seems like people that win didn't, you know, kind of were around the mix you know, the week before or the last couple of weeks, but didn't like wear themselves out being coming down the stretch, having to make a shot to win. Cause that, that'll wear you out too. You know, you put everything into that and he didn't do that. He just kind of looked like he was trying, but not, you know, not, he was looking at his game for this week. So I, I actually think he probably, this will be one of his chances he has. It depends on how he gets off, to what start he gets oh, off yeah. to. He's not good at, if he if he gets off to a bad start the first few holes, and like your other trend that was interesting is that if you if you're leading, and if you're played early, so if the the first round whoever's got the morning tea times is going to have a huge advantage. Jared, who would you take, Rom or McIlroy? So it, it'd be Rom for me. Rom Rom would be my favorite bat among these top three guys. I I think Rom has a better chance to win than Rory, and I I don't think Scheffler has a more than twice the chance of winning as Ron. Like, I, it's I almost I three Ron times could, as much. No, exactly. So I don't think that's right. The one thing I'll say about Rory is he gained 7.4 strokes on approach last week at Valero. That was his best approach tournament since May of 2019. <gasps> wow. So his, his irons were awesome last week, and we know the driver is going to be good. Um, so I, I think Rory has a real shot. I think he has a better shot than I thought he was going to, you know, a, a few weeks ago. I think he's trending in the right direction. All right. And then uh, we move on. We've got your top pick. Matter of fact, your top two picks are here. Uh, and that is Shoffley and Matsuyama. Shoffley 14 to 1. Matsuyama 20 to 1. Uh, by the way, Kepka is also 20 to 1. My pick last year, speaking of choking in the final round, uh, Brooks Kepka letting John Rom pass him for the win. Uh, so out of those three, though, again, Jared, you have two of those as your top plays. Matsuyama, I think, is, is a given. You have to take Matsuyama this week. I, I mean, I'm taking him big this week. I think he's uh, he's in line uh, like never before for another green jacket and maybe even more deserving because, again, those two years with no crowd one year and limited crowd the next, that's just not the same. It's just not because you just yeah. mentioned it, Jan. The pressure, the crowds. You just don't feel that when, when there's not a crowd. The crowd isn't around. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be nice to see Hideki possibly get a green jacket without, um, uh, I mean, with the crowd and proving that he could do it there. But anyway, um, Shoffley, on the other hand, J Jared, uh, I don't know. You know how you know how we've been talking about <laughs> Shoffley in oh, big yeah. spots. Yeah. Uh, this is the biggest yeah. spot of all. And I, I, just, I just can't see it. Yeah, so I'll start with Xander, um, and I want to go back to this trend we talked about last year, and it ended up hitting for us. So it's now nine of the last 12 Masters winners checked all three of these boxes heading into the year they won. They had at least one previous top 20 at the Masters. So as we've talked about, you know, course history is important here. They were averaging at least 1.9 strokes gain total per round in the three months prior to their win. And they were averaging at least 1.4 strokes gain T to green in the three months prior to their win. So again, they're just, they're guys that have good course history and are playing well. Nine of the last 12 winners checked all three of those boxes. Last year, there were four guys coming into the event that checked all four of those. It was Scheffler, Morikawa, Jason Day, and John Rahm who ended up winning. So that, you know, that this trend hit again last year. This year, there are only two players that check all three of these boxes. Now, it's tricky because we don't have the stats for a live guy. So this does not include John Rahm, Brooks Kepka, Cam Smith, Dustin Johnson. So that does make it a bit trickier. But there's only two PGA Tour guys that check all three of those boxes. One is Scotty Scheffler. The other one is Xander Shoffley. 
So I'm going to kind of follow this trend and take a shot on Xander. I know he hasn't won in a while, but the guy has, he, he's won seven times on the PGA tour. So it's not like he doesn't know how to win. He's been good in majors. If you look at all majors over the last three years, Xander Shoffley is 11th in strokes gain total. Then he's also fifth in course history at Augusta. So he's been good here. So, um, I feel very confident he's going to be in the mix on Sunday. Whether he can actually close it and, and win it is a question, but I think he's going to be in the mix. I don't know, Jan. I think for Shoffley to win an event like this, especially the Masters, the way he's playing, that he hasn't won in two and a half years, and he's already struggled this year a couple of times with the chance to win, I think he's going to have to be in one of those positions where he's in second place and the, and the player who's in first, not named Scotty Scheffler, <laughs> is the one that does what Brooks Kepka did last year and just folds and he takes advantage of that. I think that's how Shoffley can win this event. I can't see Shoffley winning this event with the lead on Sunday. No, and I totally agree because look what he did at the players. I mean, the thing is he hit a couple of shots at the players that right when he's coming down the stretch on the back nine, I want to say I think it was like 12, and 12 or 13 – that he hit it sideways and, you know, you just can't do that. And, you know, sometimes his swing isn't there and you, you wonder where that came from and obviously the pressure. And he's got an amazing short game. I mean, when he did it a couple of times, he, he, he made these incredible, you know, saves and he's and he hangs in there when that happens. I mean, if I did that, I'd freak out. And But he is really can struggle. It can really hang in there. But... I don't know if you can do it at the Masters. It's like what you said. He he could be hanging around there doing it without the most pressure, and then somebody fold, and then he's left with it. But he's he's not. I don't think his game is right now is good enough. It, it, after watching some of the shots he hit, you know, he hit a couple of really crooked shots, and you just can't do that at the Masters coming down the stretch. One thing's for sure is if he's able to win on his own, uh, then. It could be scary for everybody else in, on tour because then uh, he has no more barriers uh, mentally. And uh, his game is there. It's just he's just not able to mentally put it together for whatever reason. But he's going to win again. The question is, when he wins again, can he do it with the biggest of stages or on the biggest of stages? Matsuyama, though, again, Jared, I mean, I think this is the perfect setup for, for Hideki this week. Uh, yeah. He's off to such a great start. He's already got a green jacket, which should help. Um, he's made 11 of 12 cuts here. Eight of those are top 20s. Um, his last four years, all in the top 20, uh, including the win, with a combined 18 under par. So, yeah, he's, and he's playing great. Um, and, and, and I even noticed one of the trends. I forget, I'm one of the stats. I forget what it was. But it was a key stat, and he was on top. I forget. It's something to do with... Um, yeah, uh, I don't remember what it was, but I know it was a significant stat. I know he's not the po most powerful player on tour, but uh, his game is just rock solid right now. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at the top 10 lists that we looked at earlier in the show. He's seventh in course history over you know the last four years we're looking at. He is fourth in strokes gain T to green per round this year, and he's really been even better lately. I mean, you look at his last, what is it, four results? Yeah, since he won the Genesis, he wins the Genesis. 12th at API, 6th at the players, 7th at Valero. Um, I mean, only one or two guys I think are playing better than Hideki right now, and he has the awesome course history here. It's almost one of those situations where he, Hideki, like, he's, he seems so obvious that, like, we know golf is crazy, that he's, he's probably going to struggle this this weekend because it just doesn't make any sense that he would struggle, but he just, he just checks too many boxes for me to not be on him this week. Well, the thing is, he hits really high irons. And like I said, if the greens get firm, that's a huge advantage. And he he knows the golf course. And, and, and he's one of those people, I think he's like a Scheffler. He's going to be there in the top 10 in the end. He's he's really got a, a great attitude. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't lose it very often. You know, I mean, it's that mentality. And he used to not be that good a chipper, but he's become really good around the short game and his short game now. And so I would have said in the past that he didn't have a good enough short game like Hovland used to, but he's really improved his chipping and his putting was so good last week. I was so impressed. Well, I just found that stat and that's exactly what it is. It's strokes gained around the green. Hideki Matsuyama is number one on the PGA tour right now this year. Wow. Um, the, and the only other big name 
on that list in the top uh, seven is Scheffler, of course. But Schauffele is eighth on that list. And the funny thing is, besides Jason Day at nine, you got to go all the way down to wow, uh, Tommy Fleetwood at 25 to find another big name. So very strange that – why do you think that is, Jan? Why, why do I see players like Roger Sloan and <laughs> Chez Reeve, uh Josh Teeter, S.H. Kim – Players like that that do really well around the green, and yet it doesn't really impact their overall game. Well, it's because they, you know, they they are really good chippers, and if they weren't, they probably wouldn't even be on tour. <laughs> they have, they've point. got brilliant short games. Um, you know, like a Russell Hanley, and you know those he's there every week because he's got you know that short game can save you. Now a lot of that they say is because they can control where they miss it which is what I've always said, that, that gives you easier chip shots. But I've seen Xander make some amazing, amazing um, recovery shots. And so he's got great imagination, which makes it good for him at this tournament, at, you know, at the Masters. And uh, because he can imagine and he can pull out some amazing shots. I'm, I'm always impressed with his imagination. I just don't think they have the game from T to green to get them to the next level at this stage. They need to probably work on his swing a little more. Okay. Uh, I, I know from a from a stats perspective, just real quick, like strokes gain around the green is easily the least correlated to, to success. You know, approach and putting are easily the two most important, then off the tee is way more important than around the green. So it's just, I, I think if, if you need to be good at, at around the green game, you're, you're probably missing too many greens and you're not you know competing to win anyways. Right. You, you have to have it, but you can't be your strength. It yep. can't be the strength of your game. Okay. And, and Kepka has two runner-up finishes at the Masters. He's sitting there at 20 to 1. Uh, yeah, I, he's just not playing as good, though, as he was last year heading into the Masters, which is why I just, I'm not looking at him the same way. And by the way, back to your point, Jared, I, I do think that, I, I wouldn't say that I think Hideki is almost too obvious because he is 20 to one. I think if he was down by Shoffle, I think yeah. that we could say that 14 to one, 12 to one, but 20 to one is still, you know, showing me that, yeah, it's where he should be kind of, you know? So I think it's where, it, I think it's where it should be. I think, well, what, when he won, when he won Genesis, he was like 60 to one. So he, his odds have dropped quite a bit. As, sure. But I think as they should have, cause he is playing so well, he has the course history. I'm um, just, just on Brooks real quick, like he was a guy I thought I was going to bet this week as of like five days ago. Okay. But he shot, he was plus 10 at Jarrell over the weekend. He went plus five, plus five, the final two rounds. He's, he's like, he's changing his putter. He's been messing with his putter, which is, is weird. He's been struggling putting on live. So um, yeah, he just, and this might sound stupid by Monday because he might come out and win because he's so good at, at majors, but um, he, he, he doesn't seem to be, in a spot right now where, he, where he's ready to win a Masters. I agree. I mean, last year he he blew it because he lost his, you know, he lost his cool. And again, because you're under pressure, he got so frustrated with Cantley because Cantley was slow playing the group ahead, and he was getting so frustrated. Whereas you could see John Rahm was he was running, going to the bathroom, he was cleaning his clubs because when he'd stand there and wait, he was clearly not letting it upset him and. Brooks was getting really upset. And again, that's because the pressure, he probably hadn't slept in a week. And so it, it, it got to him and you could see John just, you know, was just did something, whatever it was going to take to keep him away from the fact that Cantley was slow playing. And so that's when you can tell the pressure's getting to you. You know, I, I think we talked about this in the beginning of, in the beginning of the year with Jan, because you took Matsuyama on your fantasy team. And we talked about how, uh, he how, how, how uh, disappointing his play had been uh, for a while uh, because this is the player that we remember. This is the player that we expect Matsuyama to be. We expect him to be 20 to 1 to win the Masters. Um, uh, but of course, Jared brings up a good point that in the beginning of the year at all these big events, he was 50 and 60 to 1 because that's that, that was the results of his game over the last couple of years. So now the question is, is uh, is he now ready to kind of, you know, put up or shut up time? Because, yeah, he's got to win, but, you know, everybody can win on the PGA Tour. Just look at Malnati. Uh, 
But uh, can he go back and, and, and win another major and get back to being the player that we believe he can be? So that's the question. All right, and another one of those players in that mix is Jordan Spieth. He's 25 to 1. And uh, Spieth. He's only 25 to 1 is the yeah. way he's played. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jordan is actually my top pick. And, and look, uh, Scheffler, like I said, I'm probably going to take him in my one and done since I still have him. But at 4 to 1. Uh, yeah, I'm not one of those people that has uh, 500 bucks or a thousand dollars to throw around. If I did, <laughs> I'd put it on Scheffler. But Spieth, uh, I think the odds are, are solid. We know how good he can play here. He's got six top fives in ten appearances, and um, his game is uh, finally looking like uh, last week that it's 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 getting going where it needs to be to come into Augusta feeling confident again, and that's why I think he's a pretty good play again this week, Jared. Yeah, so Spieth's interesting. He obviously has the awesome course history. If you look, if you look back though, every year he's you know top ten or, or one at the Masters. He's been playing really well coming into that event, and then all the times he's disappointed. I mean, you know, he missed the cut in 2022. He finished 46th in 2020, and all all those instances he was he was struggling coming into the event. So he, he's been kind of predictable. The one thing I'll say about Spieth is he's been disappointing all season. But he had the 10th at Valero last week. He gained 9.1 strokes ball striking. That's off the tee plus approach. That was his best ball striking performance since May of 2022. So he's another guy kind of like Rory who um, they've been disappointing for most of the year. But, you know, last week, you know, maybe they, they found something. Um, so I, I think Spieth has a shot. You know, he, he's one of the 10 to 15 guys I, I'd say has a, has a chance to win um, just because of really because of the course history, how many strong finishes he's had here. Well, the thing with with Jordan is that the two weeks ago, um, the, he in uh, Houston, no, San Antonio, he his coach was there all week, and and he didn't he practiced you know at home in Dallas, and then um, came out last week, and then got off to a really bad start, and that was that was going to be my indication when he just hit it looked like he was going to miss the cut. I mean, he hit it horrible, and then he made a one, and then a, and then an eagle or a birdie. And that just kicked him back off because, you know, he's one of those people that he, 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 when he's confident or, or happy, it seems like he can do anything because his short game is, is just brilliant. I mean, he's like a, he's even better than, than Xander. And I think Xander is probably one of the best and he can get up and down from anywhere. And as soon as you think he's going to have, you know, play really well. And then he will shoot a, a, a shot from anywhere. That's just horrible. And you wonder how he can, but he's been working really hard on his long game. So I would expect that he'll surprise everybody. He's got a really good, you know, he loves the feel of that golf course. He loves that his two little kids come out on Wednesday and he, he gets really into it. And his, um, his little son, you know, loves to get dressed up in his little white uniform on Wednesday. And so does Rory's little daughter, Poppy. She cannot wait to have that uniform on and run around with the other kids. And so maybe that break from the stress of it all is is something that's going to be good for them both yeah the only thing about jordan and rory that's scary right now is is that they've had the holes that they've just blown up at and you just can't do that as you mentioned jan here and so that's the thing that just worries you the most uh it's going to be what's going to worry me the most about taking jordan this week uh is whether or not he's going to have just one of those rounds one of those nine holes runs where he just completely loses his game and can't recover from it. Um, I'm going to pop up the picks. So there they are. Th those are Jared's picks. He's got three. We've already been through two. Those are my five. We've been through one. So let's continue. You got Neiman at 28. You got Ludwig at 30. Uh, you've got Hovland Fitzpatrick at 35. DeChambeau's also 35. So uh, now Neiman uh, he the thing that's interesting there is his first four uh, three appearances 19 over par. Um, last year he was two under par, finished 16th. So he has been getting better each time he's played here, and he's had a nice season. But his odds have dropped all the way to 20 28 to one. We told everybody early on to take him when he was about 50. Hopefully you got him then. Uh, that's what worries me a little bit. 28. He's kind of with the big boys now. We haven't really seen him yep. with the big boys this year. Uh, Ludwig, it's his first major. I just think that's asking way too much for him, though you would think it would be a nice story to see him contend. Fitzpatrick, 
I don't know what's up with Fitzpatrick's game. He's just too inconsistent right now, even though he's made eight out of nine cuts. He was 10th last year, one of only two top 10s he's had at Augusta. And Hovland, what is he doing, Jan? Everybody's criticizing Victor Hovland just when he just, you know, peaked last year. He decides, ah, it's not good enough. I just, I don't like the way I'm, I don't like the, the feel of when I hit the ball. I just don't like that feel. I know it's effective, but I just don't like the feel of it. So I have to, I'm going to go back to when it was, when I liked it, when it was the feel was it. And I got to try to make the feel good and the, the result good at the same time. These players just drive you crazy when they think about stuff like this. <laughs> well, I understand what he was thinking, but to go backwards when he was actually making improvements in his golf swing, because he did have some unusual things in his swing. And the way he was fixing them, I liked the way he was fixing them. So then to say, oh, I don't like that anymore. I'm going to go back to hitting it further. And when you do that, you know, you lose a lot of control. I mean, his iron play coming, you think of him on, at the Tour Championship was brilliant. Yep. And, and he, he had this new little cutoffs, uh, you know, action coming through the ball and it kept the blade square. And so the ball was just on a dart. And then he decided, oh, no, I think I want to go back to hitting it longer. And, and you just wonder what they're thinking. I mean, he worked so hard on his short game last year. He got, you know, new coaches. They taught him bunker shots. They taught him a whole bunch of stuff he didn't have. And then why you wouldn't stick to that? Now, he is a, he is a late bloomer. You think about it, He doesn't really get off to a good start on any of his seasons. Um, so, you know, the fact that I don't know whether it's because he lives in Oklahoma, I don't, but – I'm, I would have expected him to have turned it around by now, but when you make changes, you know how that goes. And um, I'm I'm so I'm, I'm so disappointed that he changed the golf swing he had. I I, I liked it. Now with Neiman, I, I like him. I, I, when you picked when said pick two top fifties at the time, he was a fifty to one, and I liked his chances because I watched him win the Australian Open, and coming down, when he had to win in, in the in the playoff, he. He really performed. I mean, he hit some amazing shots in the playoff uh, to beat Hiroshima. And so I was expecting big things from him, even though he hasn't had a great, he's had enough. I think the, the part that's going to, that's really helped him is that he's played around the world and you have so many different kinds of golf courses and grasses. And I think that's helped his game. Whereas when you play in America, everything is, is perfect and, you know, everything is manicured. And so you, you kind of get a little spoiled. But when you get to the Masters, now he gets to come be at a real tournament, you know, after being in the Live Tour. And I think he's I think he's got something to prove. You know, he's going to get to play in the major, the in the, the well, the British Open as well, or the Open Championship. So he's, I don't know if he gets to play in the PGA. I think he does. But I know that he's going to get to play the US Open as well. So I'm expecting big things from him. Who do you like in that group, Jared? Yeah, it'd be Neiman for me. Um, he has just been by far the best player on live so far this year. Um, he also has that win at Riviera, which I think is the best crossover course with Augusta. You look at a lot of guys just play well at both Augusta and Riviera. So I think that's good news for Neiman. Uh, bent grass greens are his best putting surface. These are bent grass greens at Augusta. So there's a lot of um things to like about him this week and he does you know he does have experience now he's played this event four times and he's improved every every time uh culminating with a 16th place finish last year so i i just i don't think the other guys that we just talked about are really live to win this thing i think neiman i think neiman has a chance okay and now we go to the 40 to 1 group you got finau cantley dustin johnson who's got a green jacket zalatoris and wyndham clark so look uh one of my picks is uh, two of my picks are in this group, um, and that will be Finau and Wyndham Clark. And mm. I know I know he has never played here before, and I get all that, but I've seen enough trends broken this year that I'm not going to worry about that, uh, including UConn winning back to back titles for the first time uh, in like 25 years in college basketball. So uh, trends, <laughs> trends have been broken this year. Um, and and I and look, Wyndham Clark starts off at 28 to one. I was back to being that number again. 40 to what? What is he doing at 40 to? He has no back issues anymore. He's already told everybody it's fine now. What do you don't believe him? I do. So, anyway, Wyndham Clark, I know he hasn't won there before, but who cares? Um, Zalatoris, 
you have to be concerned with his game the last couple of outings. That's the only reason why I, I can't take him this week. And But Finau, you know, I get the feeling Finau, out of all the majors, this could be the one he wins. He's had good success here before. I believe he's never missed a cut, six for six. He has three top tens, one top five. Um, and he also is coming in off of that second at Houston, which should get his confidence going. So out of that group, uh, Jan, um, I've got Finau and Clark in my list this week. Uh, who do you like in that in that group? Well, I love Tony Finau's golf swing. He hits it again. He's one of those people that hits it really high. Uh, and uh, the only thing my, my concern is that he's a bit weak with the putter. Um, he's everything else about his game I like. I don't know if he can handle the pressure as much. He's a very sweet, very nice guy, and and uh, it, it, it's a lot of pressure. If he can do it come at the end, I think he's got a good shot. Wyndham Clark, he wants it. He wants it. And, you know, up until this year, his putting was always the weakest part of his game. He spent the whole winter fixing his putting. So now he's actually almost extra confident with his putting, which is great. He already has a great game. But Tony Finau hits it so high. Again, I, I keep saying that is such a huge advantage. If Unless it rains, it's a huge advantage at the Masters. And he drives it so well. Out of all the top players big name players who does not hit it high enough. Do you think that, you know, that would turn you off to taking him this week? Well, I think, uh, I, I think someone like, um, well, Fitzpatrick. And as much as I think, you know, I took him and think he's going to do better. Um, the, the, the English people don't hit it as high. But then you some you see someone like a Lud, Ludwig, even though he hasn't played there much, he hits the ball really high. So I think that's a huge advantage. Um, so Fitzpatrick is the only one that you can think of that really doesn't hit the ball high enough to, to, to win there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I think, I mean, he's gotten better, but it's not as high. I don't think it's high enough. Uh, Jared, who do you like in that grouping? So I, I talked about not really liking the previous group. I like this group quite a bit. I think Finau, Dustin Johnson, Zal Torres, and Wyndham Clark all have a chance to win. Um, yeah, you said it about Wyndham Greg. I mean, the only thing not to like about him is the fact that he's never played here before, and we haven't had uh, a winner in his first time here since, what was it, 1979, I think is, is the year that Fuzzy Zeller did it. Um, other than that, I mean, this course should be awesome for Wyndham Clark. He hits it long. He has a good short game. As Jan said, he's become a really good putter. So I like him. And then, yeah, I, I like the Finau play, Greg. He is hitting it really as well as anyone. It's just been the putter that's held him back so far. He's had good putting performances on these greens for whatever reason. So if he can you know, find that again this weekend, I definitely think he can win. All right. Uh, 45 to 1. You got Fleetwood, JT, and Cameron Smith. JT's game was so hot early on. It's kind of cooled off just a little bit. Uh, but you do wonder uh, whether or not this is the week that he puts it all together. He has made seven of eight cuts, but only one top five at Augusta. Missed a cut last year for the first time. Uh, Tommy at 45 to 1. He, it's a player that definitely has had a hard time closing things out. He's made six to seven cuts, just one top 15. He ain't closing out Augusta, that's for sure. Uh, he's have to hope that uh, uh, somebody blows the lead if he's in contention. And Cameron Smith would be the one. His odds keep growing. And uh, the, 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 the more they grow, the, the, the better I feel about just throwing a few bucks on him because – hey, maybe he was just food poisoning and now it's over with and he's back to being the guy that uh, finished second at Live a couple of weeks ago uh, because we know he'd probably be about 25 to 1 if it wasn't for the food poisoning uh, last week uh, because this is a, an event, Jan, that Cameron Smith might just win at some point. He loves the golf course and he's got – he's. He's got the best short game of anybody. He's, I've seen. I've never seen him, anyone that can hit those little wedge shots where they look like you've, they've bladed them and they just stop on a dime and things like that, that that you have to do with Augusta. If you get yourself in trouble, you can either have to hit a really, really high one or something with a lot of spin. He's, he's chipping. Him and Jason Day are the best chippers I've ever seen on different grasses, on you, you know, on different hills. And you got to remember how many hills you're, you're going with. So... When you get something against the grain, these guys know how to shallow it out. And it's just, it's a, it's a knack. Yeah, uh, Jared, Cam Smith has played here 
uh, seven times. I believe yep. he's never missed the cut. <laughs> And he has four top tens, three top fives, and a runner-up. And it makes sense. It should be a good golf course for him, right? Because you can be a little wild off the tee here, which is his problem from time to time. But you can get away with that here. He's a good iron player. He's, as Jan said, an awesome around the green player. So it makes sense. Justin Thomas, how about him parting ways with uh, Bones? I that know. Was, you know surpri- the, the timing of it is, is most surprising, like you know, two weeks before the Masters. So that's what has me off him is i just i don't know what's going on there i don't don't even know who his new caddy is do we know yet no i mean and they've kept it very quiet because i've been trying to find out why and uh, i thought maybe because bones was getting you know a bigger contract with nbc or whether it that justin didn't like the fact that he couldn't practice with him all the time one way or the other because he was doing part-time tv and you know i mean bones got the job because phil got it for him when he when he left to go to live because he didn't know how much he was going to play. And it's turned out to be quite successful for Bones. And I don't know that I noticed when I was at Valspar and JT was there with his dad and practicing and Bones was not there and Bones was off preparing for a TV event. And so I don't know whether that was what did it. I mean, I, I've been trying to find out and I can't. <laughs> if they've kept it very quiet, they've been very, you know, classy about it, but they haven't said, well, I just want more time with a caddy that's devoted to me or or Bones once. It was, it's Makes been sense. very interesting that nothing's been said about it. All right, next group, we get to the 50 to ones. You got Thigala, Morikawa, Cameron Young, uh, then at 55, Hatton, Henley, and Homa. We talked about Homa and Hatton not having good resumes here, so cross them off. Uh, Henley, is he a major winner? Doubtful. Um, uh, his resume here is okay. Six out of seven cuts made, and fourth last year, which was by far his best finish. Cam Young, as we mentioned before, he only has uh, the two KFT wins. He does not have a PGA Tour win yet, so uh, he'd be in Larry Mai's company if he won this week. Uh, he was seventh, though, last year. In his second appearance, uh, he made up 16 strokes after missing the cut uh, in 2022 at 10 over par. So that's promising. But his game was better at that time last year. Uh, Morikawa, uh, have you finally given up, by the way, on Morikawa, Jared, uh, for now? Uh, he's- yeah, I mean, I mean the, the fact that he's 50 to 1 and I'm not betting him should be yeah, right? something. Cause yeah. that's insane. Like Morikawa at 50 and Homa at 55. Yeah. Like, I don't, like those are insane numbers on those two guys, but I'm trying to be disciplined and not bet them just because more. And more cow even has the course history here. He's he had does. some high finishes here, but yeah. hit. I never thought I'd see him hit his irons as poorly as he has over the last month. Cause that's always been the strength of his game. So I I'm being disciplined, not betting more cow. And then home is playing a bit better than Colin is, but I don't think max is playing great. And he just doesn't have the course history here. And your the pick that you do have is, is your last pick. You have three picks, and that's the gala. Now he's only played once. That was last year. It was very strong. He finished ninth at five under par. He does. Have, he only has, of course, one pro win. That was the PGA win last year. But uh, yeah, you, you do get the feeling that uh, after what you saw last year, that yeah, maybe this is a good course for him. Yeah, I think it's a course he's going to like. I think I, I've said on this show a few times that he that that Sahith kind of reminds me of Jordan Spieth. I think they play similar games. They're just super creative in their shot making. You know, so he can work it both ways. He's really good around the green. So I do think Augusta will end up being a really nice course for him. I think there's a good chance he does win a Masters at some point in his career. And he, he's just playing well coming into this one. Sahith is sixth in strokes gain total over the last three months in this field. And he is seventh in this field off the tee over the last three months. And that you know, early in his career was, was his weak spot. He'd get wild off the tee and he still had some wild misses. I know at the players, he was in the mix because I, I had a bet on him and he hit a really poor drive on one of the par fives that sort of took him out of it. So that's the one concern. But again, at, at Augusta, you can get away with some of those wild drives as we've seen, you know, speeds do when he's won and he's, he's played well. So I just think, um, so hits the guy I'm probably going to be betting at the masters quite a bit uh, throughout his career. Yeah, the thing, though, is, uh, like we said, with the pressure. Can he handle the pressure if he's in contention on Sunday? We will see. But you're getting 50 to 1. So that's uh, that's 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 where you can be okay with uh, not having to worry too much about whether a play. Big difference between worrying about the gal at 50 to 1 and Shoffley at 14 to 1. That's a big difference. 
Um, yep. Okay, so Jan, now we're getting into 50 to 1 category, uh, territory. Uh, are any of these players that we've just mentioned, any of them on your list of players that you would take at over 50 to 1? Absolutely. I'd take Sahith every time. Uh, number one, he hits the ball really high. Uh, and, and he actually has played there more. He won the junior there when he was like 13. Yeah, there you uh, go. The Check. Junior Masters. So, Jared's um, happy. I think, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that, you know, I mean, you've, you've played there enough and he's a big enough name that he's played enough there to, to know the course. Uh, I actually think that that he's he's an advantage because he does have a short good, a good short game and he's a great putter. I mean, I really like his putting. So coming down the stretch, he's the type that could win, but especially as far as he hits it. So if he can get off to a good start. Uh, you think of some of those first few holes, that, that's a huge advantage. And so... I actually think out of all of those, he's got the best chance of the 50 to ones. He, he, him and Neiman were my two 50 to ones, and then Neiman's already gone back down. Yeah. All right. Uh, now let's, uh, we've got 10 minutes left, so let's kind of run through these. Um, next up, we've got a group here that includes major winners, Lowry, Harmon, Day, Reed, Scott. That's between 60 and 70 to one. Out of that group that we're just looking at right now, I have one player on my list. Do you know who that is, Jared? I'm going to guess Shane Lowry. How did you know? There you go. I think he's a good I think he's a good bet. There you go. <laughs> Out of all those players, he got it. See? He he's knows me. Bet. Yeah, Shane Lowry, I like him this week. His, his the, the stats seem to match up uh well here. He's only had four top 25s out of eight. That's nothing special. He was third a couple years ago, but this is what I also like. In his first four appearances at Augusta, he was 27 over par. In his last four appearances at Augusta, experience 11 under par. Um, and he's now entering his ninth appearance, which is just about what we talked about as well. So, yeah, does Shane Lowry have an, a green jacket in his future? Uh, if he does, this would be a year that maybe he'd be able to do that. Um, I don't have any of the, uh, these other players, but we did talk about Harmon. I'm intrigued by Harmon, but probably not going to take him. I don't like the way Jason Day's game is or Adam Scott's game. And Patrick Reed is not having a great year. Corey Connors has got a good history here. He has a few top tens at Augusta. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, and see Kim could be interesting because he always, you know, makes a name for himself in some of these big events. But, um, uh, Jan, uh, what do you think about this group? Well, I think, uh, Lowry is such a good driver. I mean, he's, as far as, uh, he doesn't miss many fairways. I, I remember watching him play in, um, a couple of years ago and he, I think he hit every fairway and, and, and you know, the guys these days that doesn't happen very often. I mean, he really drove it well. He's already got a major. So that part is, and he's comfortable. He's like you said, he's improved. He's every week he's getting better at the masters. And so I think he's comfortable with where he is as far as, um, you know, and being one of the top players. So he's got a chance. I still like Jason a little bit because of his short game, but Adam Scott has something about, the masters that does it for him. He loves this golf tournament. It's his next to this one and uh, Riviera, his two favorite tournaments all around the world. And the only problem I have with that is that he's not a great putter. You know, under pressure, he misses those four quarters. If he was a good putter, I would say every single time go with Adam Scott because he's another high ball hitter. Yeah, Adam, unfortunately, uh, strangely enough, has not played well at Augusta recently. He doesn't have a top 15 in his last five appearances. And in his last wow. three appearances at Augusta, his scoring is 30 over par. Oh, wow. So, so he's made 20 of 22 cuts at Augusta. But recently, it's not been all that great. Do you... Uh, Besides Lowry, anybody else here, uh, Jared? By the way, Siwoo's made six of seven cuts here, but uh, any anybody else here? Yeah, so I expect Siwoo and Connors to play well. I don't think they can win, but they could be like top ten bets. Okay. Um, I think I think Patrick Reed is kind of flying under the radar. He's playing well enough uh, on Live, and you know he came fourth here last year. Obviously, has the win back in 2018. He also came 10th in 2020, 8th in 2021. So he has a, you know, a really good history here. I think he's playing well enough. I think 71, he's worth a shot. I think Reed and Lowry are the two guys from that group that I'd, I'd give the best chance to actually win. All right. And as far as all the other long shots, and of course that includes big names, uh, you know, Garcia, 
uh, is 110 to one. As we mentioned, he won the Masters back in 2017. Playoff loss last week. Uh, he has a win this year on Live, right? He has a win on Live this year. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. he's lost in the playoff twice. Oh, he's lost in the playoffs twice. Okay, well, how about that? Um, also, uh, let's see other big names. Obviously, Tiger. He's a big name, uh, five-time champ. Uh, but expecting him to win this year, it's it would, it would probably be equivalent to when Jack won, uh, because uh, he's just not on top of it. I mean, nobody even knows if he's going to last uh, four rounds, let alone win with the back issue. But um, the, the players that I, I wanted to just bring out that I would definitely throw a couple of bucks in, long shot wise, and I and he's my last pick, and I know he's not having a good year. This has not been a good year for Justin Rose, but. Justin Rose, uh, if he's going to win another mash, uh, major, I just think this is it. And I still think he can win it because we've seen older players win at Augusta and compete. And I think at some point, uh, maybe it's next year, the year after when his game is better. But still, uh, why not? He's made 16 of 18 cuts, three top fives, two runner-ups. He was the playoff loser to Garcia in 2017. So at 130 to 1, I'll make him my final pick. And I don't know how you just don't put a buck on Phil Mickelson. I mean, the guy was second last year. Uh, and uh, he just, he, this is it. This is, uh, you know, I'm sure, I know everybody thinks of, of the Masters and they think of Tiger, but I kind of think of Phil. I mean, you know, if Phil had Tiger's uh, game, I actually think Phil would have won here eight times. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, what do you think, Jan, about any uh, long shots, really deep long shots uh, that uh, we should keep an eye on? Oh, I don't know. I, I think it depends. If if it did start raining, then um, it might be a little different. But, you know, the golf course suits what we've just been through. I don't see anyone there that I would even think about. I don't, th- I don't think Justin Rose hits it far enough, even as firm as it is. I, I just can't see anyone there that I would, that I would even want to put any money on. Okay. Jared? Yeah, look, I'm a Jan. I'm not. I'm not betting any of these guys. The, the Masters has never been. Well, I guess Schwartz will won at 100 to one, whenever that was, 2010 or 12, whenever that was, 2011. Otherwise, though, it's like it's guys 50 to one or lower that win this thing. So I, I'm not betting any of these guys to win. I do like for top 20 bets, maybe. I think Jaeger is a pretty good fit at Augusta. Obviously, coming off his, his first win, he's a long hitter. He's gained a lot of distance. So I think he could be a good fit here. I think um, Chris Kirk has some good history here. I think he's someone to consider. Uh, Taylor Moore is got again. These are more like top twenty plays, guys. I'm considering playing on DraftKings if you're doing that this week. Um, I'm not betting any of these guys to win. Yeah. Uh, again, yeah. It's like uh, normally on a, on a week we'd have like ten guys that we would think okay, then maybe, but it's like. One, Not here. two, Not here, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, Gary Woodland was 14th last year, and he is coming off his best uh, performance of the year, right? A couple weeks ago, you mentioned. Uh, yes, Jared? his yeah. I'm, I'm pulling back up. His irons were unbelievable. At um, yeah, Houston Open, he gained 8.8 strokes on approach. That was the third best approach week of his entire career. Yeah, so that's, so, that's um, definitely encouraging. Encouraging going forward. You know, obviously not for this week, but. As we get into some, uh, other might be a good one for guys. next week because it's pretty tight. I mean, I keep Corey Connors or somebody for uh, Danny McCarthy for next week because it's so tight. But uh, yeah. um, you know, I, and he's such a Gary Woodland's such a great player. Everybody, I mean, person, everybody likes him. He's got his kids, and he's just you know, I mean, you saw him at Valspar when I interviewed him. He's just really, really genuinely a nice person. All right, so now let's wrap up with one and done, and. Uh, what what are you uh, what, what's your finalists? Who are your finalists, Jared, for one and done this week? Yes, yeah, so this is tricky because the, the obvious move is to use live guys because there's only the four tournaments you can use them. Now they're also going to be super popular. I think I think Rom will easily be the most popular play this week. I think Brooks is going to get some ownership. I'm not going to use him. So, so I, I'm I'm basically down to two guys this week. It's do I want to just play the popular Rom or I might go Hideki. Because, again, I do think it's just, you know, everything lines up for Hideki to play well. So those are the two guys I'm considering. Ram and Matsuyama. Okay. Uh, Jan, who are you thinking about for one and done? Well, I'm definitely going to do Ram because, you know, I'm doing, I'm going to, even though I don't like ever doing defending people because they're, they've got too much stuff to do. But this week there's so much anyway. I mean, the, especially the media here is ridiculous. But 
because of the live thing, he doesn't seem to have as much to do and you don't have as much social stuff at this event to do. So it's the same for everybody. Any defending champion has the Tuesday dinner. So I think, um, and the Wednesday if they want to play and I, and I, and you know, Ram will play in that little Wednesday thing. So I, I'm going to probably go with Ram. I mean, I, I usually change at the last minute and I, I mean, I want to go with Scheffler because I think this is his last chance for a few weeks but I'm still going to go with a live player. So I think I'm going with Rom. All right. Yeah. If I was going to go with a live, a live player, I would go with Cam Smith, uh, even though he's having the uh, illness, but um, yeah, I, I'm, I, I still have four, four on my list. Scheffler, Clark, Matsuyama and Spieth. So those are my four that I'm still thinking about. Probably going to go with Scheffler. Um, because I, 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 I'm not going to want to spend a lot of money on him. So I figured, well, let me just have him on one and done. So if he wins, I got him, uh, at least somehow. Um, but, uh, well, I'm in, I'm in two, so, but I'm thinking of doing Wyndham for the other one. Which one? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, you got the two contests. You, you're in two of them. Okay. So yeah, so pretty much. And, um, and who, who do you like? If you had to just pick one player, not named Scotty Shuffler to win this week, Jan, who would it be? John Rahm. John Rahm. Wow. Back to back green jackets. Imagine that. Yep. And your favorite long shot? Well, I think it's, no, um, it's either the gala or the gala. Joaquin. Yeah. The gala is the, and who's your, and your favorite long shot is obviously the gala, Jared. And you're not going to put any money. You're not even going to think of anybody outside of 50 to one, Jared. Uh, uh, no, I mean, I'm not going to bet anyone outside of 51. I do like Shane Lowry though, um, who I know is 60. I think, you know, if you, if you wanted another long shot behind uh, Sahith, I would go with Shane Lowry. All right. So that's going to wrap it up. Uh, the masters and the weather is going to be okay. Right. Uh, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, I think th I think Thursday too. It might get some rain and and I think some wind the first two days as well. So it would definitely keep an eye on the weather. Oh, so it may be yeah, a little windy. Yeah, that's going to change a lot. If, if, if whoever whoever plays on Thursday morning is probably going to have a huge advantage. You believe that? Okay, Thursday morning. Let's uh, let's write that down. Thursday morning, <laughs> tea time. That means all of my players will have the afternoon tea time on Thursday. <laughs> so, all right. Anyway, we're out of here. Jen, uh, you're heading to Augusta, right? What are you going to be doing there? Well, I'm, I I'm actually was going to just go. I'm supposed to go to a, uh, represent my sponsors um, giving the uh, Player of the Year award, and I'm going to be doing that. Um, so I'm going to do that. When's that? Watch the Wednesday. Watch the Wednesday. Um, and then Thursday, one day of golf, and then I've got to get back. All right. So you're going to watch Thursday's round of golf at Augusta. All yeah. right. Well, enjoy. Hopefully, uh, well, we'll find out what you what you find out while you're there. And we'll talk to you soon. We've got uh, RBC. By the way, RBC, that's a, a, a big event, right, next week? Yeah. yeah. Do. So My we'll, favorite golf course. We'll find out. That's cool. Uh, who playing because a lot of some of the guys did not play last year so that was one they skipped because of obvious yeah. reasons so we'll see who skips it this week this time around yeah and, rory got fined three million dollars for skipping oh that's a lot of money uh even for rory and uh scheffler may skip with the birth of his child coming soon so maybe yeah. especially if he wins this week and then uh and then we take the week off our only week off is in two weeks oh. When they play that ridiculous team event <laughs> in New Orleans, it wastes everybody's time. Uh, and, uh, and then we'll be back after that. W when's the next big event coming up? Well, we've got RBC, but it, what's coming up next month? P PGA, the PGA. Right? PGA is next month. Okay, PGA. All right, so we've got some time before that, obviously. We want to thank everybody. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. Let us know what's on your mind. And uh, anyway, we'll see you again here next week on Tee Off with Jan Stevenson.